Okay, a second really common way of trying to process a dynamic signal uh, to reduce that data uh, is to use a st uh, statistic, to do a statistical analysis. Um, so um, the first way to do that is to find a mean value, okay? And a mean value, we've got a nice kind of nasty looking equation here, but all this is saying is we're gonna take the integral of our signal, that is this yellowish area, right? And we're gonna divide it by how much time we've been taking um, data. And so that gives us an average amplitude over time. Uh, and you can see that if we sort of rearrange that equation, um, this equation over here is y bar, our mean value, times this, uh, the distance of time that we've been taking data, and that's going to give us that shaded rectangle there. Uh, and that shaded rectangle is the same as the area of that integral. Um, and so the usefulness of this is it tells us uh, what's, our, what's our average data point here? Where, where's the middle of our curve? And it's kind of obvious when you look at it with this curve, but you can imagine with a more complex data set or a stochastic data set, uh, it would be hard to do that to find that mean just by observation. Um, and so this is a useful tool for us. We call that Y bar, uh, the average amplitude here, we call that the DC component or the DC offset of the signal. Uh, DC meaning here direct current. So that the metaphor essentially is our signal is a voltage signal. And part of it is a steady direct current that stays the same. And set on top of that steady direct current is some kind of alternating current, okay? This is the DC component. It's that area right here. This is where our, our base level of the voltage is uh, before we start adding some kind of uh, oscillating signal. So that's the DC offset or the DC component. Sometimes we even wanna remove that DC because all we're interested in is uh, the oscillations themselves. In discrete form, we can't take an integral. Uh, and so you can imagine that what's that gonna look like? Well, we're gonna take an average of our data points. And that's all this is. Sum up the Y value of your data points, divide it by the number of data points, and you get your, the average strength of your signal. So that's the same thing as that mean, uh, but in discrete form. And of course, most of the time we're dealing with discrete data sets. Uh, and so we'll use this equation more than, uh, more than the one on the previous page. So the mean value tells us about the DC component, but it doesn't tell us anything about the fluctuations in the signal. Uh, and that's called the AC component, uh, the alternating current component. Uh, but we can evaluate that AC component and the size of that, right, um, by using what's called the root mean square or RMS value. Uh, and that is this equation here. Um, now, what does that mean? What does this equation mean? Well, if you look at this, we're integrating the difference between the mean, oh, the mean over here, and each data point. Uh, so, in other words, the gap between this and this, the gap between this and this, this and this. So we're integrating this area here and this area here. This one's gonna be negative, but we're gonna square it to get rid of that negative. And then we're gonna divide by the amount of time. Okay, so again, we're finding not the average value of Y, but the average distance between the Y value and the mean value. You'll notice, I hope, that this is very similar to standard deviation, right? So we've done this, we've seen a similar equation in standard deviation, uh, which is down here. We saw a similar equation when we tried to find the standard error of the fit, right? How far our data points were away from our uh, fitted curve. And we see the same thing right here. The deviation between the mean and each value squared, sum them all up, divide by the number of data points, take the square root to get rid of the squareness of it. Uh, and that's your root mean square. 
okay? And like the standard deviation, RMS represents the average size of that deviation from the mean. So it's telling us how big that AC component is on average, right? And you can imagine we could have a signal that had the same DC component that maybe went up and down like, you know, at this level, and the RMS for that signal uh, would be significantly less than the RMS of this, right? Um, so it's telling us how large those uh, oscillations are in terms of amplitude. So now we can describe a signal. We can say, oh, it's got a DC component of this. It's got an AC component of this. Uh, it's got this kind of frequency to it. Um, and that's going to tell us a lot with just three data points about what that signal looks like.